deep section carbon wheels. They're designed to be aerodynamic and lightweight to help us ride faster. Not only that, they look and sound outrageously cool. Wheels such as these are often one of the first big upgrades many of us turn to when looking to make changes to our bikes. Perhaps your bike came fitted with some shallow aluminium wheels, perfectly capable up to the job of getting you from A to B easily, quickly, and with zero fuss. But what if you want to get from A to B a little bit quicker and find it a little bit easier? Or perhaps you want to try and finish a few places higher in a big event or a race? Or perhaps you want to drop your mates on the club run, or in Ollie's case, you just want to last that little bit longer before getting dropped yourself. <laughs> well, in this video, I'm going to find out just how much difference there is when upgrading from your standard wheels to something like these, the brand new Fancy Pants Zip 808 Firecrest. Whoa! I'm using these wheels to illustrate the upgrade for a number of different reasons. Firstly, they're newly launched, fantastic, and also Zip have been kind enough to lend me a set so I can tell you guys all about them. But crucially, Zip say these are their fastest road wheel set they've ever made. And they've made some pretty influential wheels in the past, so I'm going to find out just how much faster these wheels can make me, and therefore how much faster they could make you. To do that, I'm recreating an experiment from a very youthful looking Cy Richardson from six years ago. I blow my doors. Which means I'm going to ride my 13.1 kilometre test loop as fast as I possibly can. Now the test loop, if you want to ride around it, is aptly named Zip 808 Firecrest GCN test loop on Kamut, if you really do have the burning desire to come here and ride around yourself. Fitted to my bike first time round are going to be some standard alloy wheels, you know, the kind of thing that you'd find fitted to a one to two thousand pound or euro bike. I'm going to record all the data, but mostly I'm going to be focusing on my average speed and my average power. Then I'm going to drop these bad boys in my bike, have a little lay down, and then repeat the experiment. But on experiment number two, I'm going to try and ride at the same average speed, but for as long as possible. So looking back at size video, not only highlights how much our GCN kit has changed over the years, but it also highlights how the development of the 808 wheel has changed over the years. Now, as well as launching the 808 Firecrest, Zip have also released the 858 NSW. And if you want to find out more about that wheel set, then you need to head over to GTN, the Global Triathlon Network, where they've got a video covering everything you could know about that wheel set. Now what is interesting though is that these new wheels aren't just about aerodynamics and stability. You see, Zip have invested heavily into the research about how internal rim width and shape affects and interplays with your tyre width and your tyre's performance, not only in reference to the tyre's rolling resistance, but also aerodynamics and how it affects the system as a whole. The end result of all of Zip's hard work is that when compared to the previous generation 808, there's a 282 gram reduction in weight. And because the rim is wider, you can now use wider tires, which exhibit a lower rolling resistance. Wider tires allow you to run a lower pressure, which is gonna result in more vibration absorption too, which is not only gonna help make you ride faster, but also improve the comfort on your bike. And Zip also say all of this is done without negatively affecting the aerodynamics too. Right, I've waffled on for long enough. I can't put this first test off for any longer. Roll into it. Press the lap button as we go. Three, two, one. Here it goes. So while I do my very best to set a benchmark for this experiment, let me tell you more about my test loop. It's approximately 10 kilometers southwest from the city of Wells and includes minimal elevation but it's a windy, exposed, and occasionally quite bumpy circuit where I'll do my very best in the name of science. We're north of 300 watts for most of the time so far. And to be fair, I have slightly overestimated my ability as I set off. So I might be paying for that towards the end. But uh, oh, so far, so good. Trying to remain in a real solid body position so I can replicate that for the for the second run. Whoa. 
Right, this is the final big straight now. Run one with the shallow alloy wheels. And whilst it is fast, oh, I'm starting to suffer now. All right, five, four, three, nearly there, two, one. Ah, 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 go. <coughs> right. Run one done. Ah, horrific. I won't go through the numbers yet. We'll save that juicy stuff for when we stop at the end of everything. Ah, right, <clears throat> I'm going to have a breather. I'm going to tell you more interesting stuff about the wheels. Don't go anywhere. And to help me fuel and recover for the next effort with the sporty speedy wheels in, well, I'm going to consume all the high performance energy product just like any high performance athlete would. Oh, I'll probably just have a cake. Right, let's upgrade this bike. Well, bike upgraded. How easy was that? Oh, and just FYI, we have 28 millimeter wide tires, the same on both sets of wheels. The pressures are set according to Zip's online calculator. Both tires set up tubeless, and it's important to note that these wheels are hookless, so you do have that 72 psi pressure limit. Research conducted by Zip shows in their testing a 28 millimeter tire with an 85 kilogram system weight and a tyre pressure of 57 psi in the front and 61 in the rear exhibits the lowest rolling resistance. Not only that, it also exhibits the lowest aerodynamic drag. Now this is partly down to that 23mm internal rim width and also the fact that these rims are now hookless and tubeless. Now that's a pretty big evolution because previously everything was about external rim width. One question I was keen to ask Zip though is what they would suggest slightly heavier riders do when taking into account the hookless tyre pressure limit. Because I have a feeling riders of around 90 kilograms or upwards might not be able to get the recommended pressure when trying to use a 28 millimetre tyre. Zip's answer was to simply move up a tyre size. And when taking into account all of the setup and factors on the bike that I'm running today, Zip's online tyre pressure calculator recommended 64.7 psi in the front and 68.8 psi in the back. Although I'm going to call it 65 and 69, just to keep it simple. To reduce the wheel weight, Zip have tweaked the carbon thickness in individual areas of the rim. They've reduced the rim height by a couple of millimetres, but they've saved loads of weight by moving to the hookless rim design. And at the manufacturing stage of the process, it allows them to use less resin to reduce that weight, but maintain the rim strength. Well, that's quite a lot of information so far. So much so that I actually started to feel pretty recovered. So I'm making my way back up to the start line ready for our second run and I'm going to be trying to maintain 39.1 kilometers an hour. I've got everything the same, I've got the same equipment apart from the wheels, same tyres, same bike setup, same kit, I'm going to ride in the same position, I'm going to do my best to ride on the same bit of road and uh, well, we'll just see how much longer I can actually ride for. I'm actually kind of nervous because imagine if it's just twice as long, I'm going to be here forever. Um, seeing as I rolled into the first test, I do exactly the same, I roll past the start line, press the lap button, and uh, well, away we go. So, off I go, again. And while I'm suffering on the bike, again, let me tell you some more about the wheels, as hopefully I'm gonna be riding a fair bit longer than 20 minutes. You see, generally speaking, the deeper the wheel rim, the heavier the wheel, because you quite simply have more material. And whilst aerodynamics trumps weight in order to ride faster in most situations, if you can maintain that fast aerodynamic properties of any component and reduce its weight, that is a good thing. And it makes a wheel that was all about speed on flat terrain a genuine all-round contender now. We are spot on the money for the average speed and the average power shock is lower. Well, no great shock, but 
what is noticeable is on these real fast straight sections, the momentum the bike carries is, is something that you can really notice and feel in your legs. I am significantly lower on my power to ride at the same speed, which is it's promising to know, it's encouraging. Last little bit, lap one, this is where I was on my absolute knees. Oh, I mean, I'm not feeling much better now, but I've certainly got more in the tank. So from now onwards, it's literally gonna signify our margin of improvement. I've allowed for a 0.1 variation tolerance from average speed, and I'm about to dip below that. Yeah, the legs. My legs are fading, and it's on 39. Second, it goes to 30. 8.9. Ah! Ah, that's it. Ah, 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 ah. ah. I'll press that. Ah. Right, I've caught my breath ever so slightly, and before we head down that way, I think to the nearest cafe and crunch through the numbers. Let me tell you some quick fast stats about these wheels. So they're 80 millimeters deep. They weigh 1,635 grams. Price, $2,300, 2,500 euros, or 2,235 pounds, including VAT. Now, that's a big investment, I know, but zip wheels, including these ones, come with a lifetime warranty for that kind of added little bit of peace of mind. Anyway, oh, oh my back, let's find this cafe. I think I've earned a blooming big coffee. Oh, there we go. Well, at least I'll get to the cafe quick. Ugh. Okay, right, I've made it back to the GCN Mega Base because, well, turns out the cafe was closed, so I'm gonna have to go without my cappuccino. But I have got all the stats and data here to run through. So on run one, I managed to sustain an average speed of 39.1 kilometers an hour with an average power of 307 watts. I mean, pretty happy with that. I've not been back on the bike very long, so yeah, I'll take that. Now, run two, the all important ones with the Speedy Boy upgraded wheels in, I managed to hold the same speed, say 39.1 kilometers an hour, for 25 minutes and four seconds. So I completed the lap and then continued to ride further, five minutes further, in fact. And the reason for that is because the new wheels allowed me to maintain a lower average power. So for the second run, I had an average power of 284 watts, which is 23 watts lower than on run one, and that's what allowed me to sustain that speed for a little bit longer. Now that's a staggering difference, but I can't say that I'm surprised given the amount of tech and research that's gone into developing these new wheels, and they are of course significantly more expensive than the shallow alloy ones. Now there are also other upgrades that you should consider that might be slightly more cost effective to upgrade in your bike, perhaps looking at your handlebar width, refining your body position, or maybe even just upgrading your tires. But Fancy Pants Carbon Wheels are certainly an upgrade that you should try and save up for if you're able to, and they're gonna make a significant difference to the speed that you can ride at. So there you go, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments section down below what you thought of my little experiment and the wheels themselves. And you know what? We're gonna have a poll. So head over to the GCN app and I wanna know whether you think deep section carbon wheels are hot or are they not? There'll be a link in the description to take you across the GCN app. Right, that's it from me. I'm gonna go try and find that coffee I was trying to get earlier. See you later.